Hi everyone. From this video onwards, we are going to learn few question and answers from industrial microbiology. Let's begin. Here is the question. Explain in detail about the design of a fermenter. So before knowing about the fermenter, let's learn what is meant by a fermentation first. A fermentation is going to be considered as a metabolic process in which the raw materials are going to be converted into the acids, gases and the alcohols in the presence of microorganisms such as yeast and the bacteria. Such metabolic process are going to be defined as the fermentation process. Then what is meant by a fermenter? Fermenter is nothing but the vessel or a device in which this fermentation process is going to perform or occurring or simply we can define it as the it is a vessel where fermentation process is going to happen and this fermenter is a type of bioreactor then what are the basic functions of uh, any fermenter any fermenter should provide a suitable environment in which the organisms can efficiently produce the target product that target product may be of our gene of interest or cell biomass or it can be a metabolite or it can be any bioconversion product. Then what are the important factors that to be noticed or considered when designing a fermenter? So here, if you are going to design a fermenter, we should uh, be uh, able to provide the best possible growth and the biosynthesis of the microorganisms and the product and that fermenter must be able to strong enough to withstand the pressures as well as the, uh, the temperature fluctuations of the medium that we are using. Then any fabrication material that we are using for the fermenter designing should not be corroded by the product nor contribute toxic ions to the medium and it also must be having a provision to control of contaminants too and there must be uh, some sort of a provisions where we can control the contaminants sterile provision of the sterile aid and sterile medium and some sort of uh, aeration and agitation facilities and the temperature and ph controls and the sampling facilities. So these are going to be of certain means of uh, factors that we are supposed to consider while designing a fermenter. Then here is the diagram of uh, representing the fermenter, the basic fermenter. Okay. So here coming to the size and the body of a fermenter, the fermenters are going to vary in size and volume from one or two liters to five gallons so here in the picture you can see this is a laboratory fermenter where it is of very small in size and here is the industrial fermenter where you can see it is of a more quantity okay and these large cylinder is going to be constructed with either the stainless steel or it can be aluminium or alloys which needs to be non-toxic and non-corrosive so these are the two main factors that to be noticed while you are selecting a material for as a fermenter. Then coming to the second here is the cooling jacket. So this cooling jacket is nothing but the cover that is going to cover the cooling coils present around the fermenter. And this cooling coil is going to be having the supply of the cool water rotating inside to control the temperatures of the medium. Because during the metabolic process, the heat will be generated that have to be controlled. Then the third point here is going to be the inlets. So here you can see the inlets. The fermenter is going to provide with uh, different types of the inlets, which may be of a steam inlet or it can be a hot water inlet or it can be a substrate inlet or it can be inoculum that means microorganisms inlet. So along with this it also contains some sort of alkali and antifoam inlets also. So here they are not mentioned but like this pipes only they are going to be introduced 
and these alkalis and the anti-foaming agents are added to maintain the constant pH and reduce the foaming that is while so next coming to the aeration system so the main purpose of this aeration system is to provide the oxygen that is necessary for the microorganism metabolic requirements and this aeration can have the two types of the devices one is going to be sparger and another one is impeller this impeller is going to have the two types of the things one is the aeration supply of the oxygen and second one is the mixing so that we will see here so coming to the sparger so here you can see the sparger this sparger is a metallic ring having a series of holes through which the sterile air is going to enter with high pressure causing the formation of bubbles so these are all going to be the bubbles and what is the function of these bubbles these bubbles are going to uh, supply the oxygen into the medium by the process of diffusion and the smaller the bubbles are going to be the better the diffusion that means the better the system is going to be and there are going to be of three types of the spargers one is going to be the porous sparger so here you can see this is a porous sparger and another one is going to be the what we call as a orifice sparger where you are going to the whole pipe is going to have the perforations that is going to be called as a orifice so the total pipe is going to have the holes that is going to be called as orifice uh, sparger another one is going to be called as a nozzle sparger where half of the uh, what we call as a pipe is going to be closed or open and open or the partially closed pipe is going to be called as nozzle sparger so either the totally open one or it is going to be partially closed where uh, the pressurized uh, air is going to come from this one so this is how we are going to have the three types of the spargers one is going to be called as sparger that is a porous sparger that is there in this diagram and the second one is going to be the orifice where the total pipe is going to have the perforated pipe and the third one is going to be called as nozzle sparger which is going to be an open or partially closed pipe then coming to the agitation system so what is meant by agitation so agitation means it's a kind of mixing so this mixing is very very important to make these cells to be evenly distributed throughout the medium and the medium should be supplied to the microorganisms evenly throughout the thing so here agitation of the suspended cell fermentation is provided in order to mix the three phases the gas liquid and the solid within a fermenter and these uh, agitation system is going to possess three kinds of the components one is called as impeller so here you can see the blade like structures these are going to be called as a impellers and these impellers can be of the different uh, what we call as shapes it can be disc turbines so these are going to be called as disc turbines and they can be of open turbines or they can be of a propeller like fan like one okay and this uh, main function of this impeller is meant for mixing of air or the inoculum into the medium such that it is going to evenly uniformly availability of the nutrients to the microbial cells and this is a long rod to which these uh, flat disc called blades are attached to the uh, shaft which we call them as a shaft shaft and these whole thing this long rod with these shaft is going to be called as a impeller okay then second one steel glands on the bearing so here they are not there uh, but uh, just uh, to notify where the seals and openings of the bioreactor are there there you are going to have this glands on the bearings and the third one is a baffle so here you can see this uh, li line one this is called as a baffle and this baffles are going to be of about one tenth of the total vessel diameter and they are going to be attached radially that means round to the wall and what is the main function of these baffles is to prevent the vortex and improve aeration efficiency so this is all about the aeration and the agitation systems then moving to the next one 
that is a drained system or the harvesting line so here you can see this is nothing but the one where you are going to collect your final fermentation broth that we call it as a outlet drying system or the harvesting lines then sampling line then coming to the sampling line fermenter's body is going to provide it with the sample line to draw the sample for periodic testing of the quality and the quantity of the product so they can be from this harvesting or they are going to be of having a separate tube from the fermenter then moving to the next one that is temperature and pressure gauge they are going to be provision of uh, some sort of a checking areas where you are going to find out the temperature and pressures because they are going to affect mostly the metabolic activities of the microbes and which have to be regularly checked from these gases then the ph control on the sensor so here you can see so this ph control sensors are going to be the very crucial instrument for your fermenter which needs to be again checked regularly along with the temperature and pressure and ph controller that is ph control sensors are going to have a sensor point and a port which is going to maintain this ph inside the fermenter because as i said the ph alterations can lead to the death of the organism and directly or indirectly which leads to the product loss so we have to be very crucial careful about this temperature pressure and the ph controls then exhaust so the safety valves present on the lid are going to have some sort of exhaust to release the pressures that are present inside the that are being created during the process in the fermenter if not there may be a chances of blast of the fermenters then the head space so what is meant by head space so here you can see the medium you are going to take is only about 3/4 of the fermenter and whatever the leftover space here the quarter space of the fermenter is going to be called as head space so from here to here it is a uh, empty space that is going to be considered as a head space and why we are leaving this space because to allow the splashing foaming and the aeration of the medium okay so nowadays we are going to use uh, some sort of a con controllers by you connecting with the computers to optimize and control all the things so nowadays the whatever the computers that we are going to use or the best examples called as dc that is direct digital control so here the manual monitoring is go not going to be seen directly the computer is going to monitor when is the ph is increasing or decreasing when the temperature is increasing and decreasing so coming this is all about the structure or a design of a general fermenter that we are using in the laboratory or in the industry then here is just uh, a note of the types of fermenters which we'll discuss in detail in the coming videos so we are having the five types of the fermenters stirred tank fermenter air lift fermenter fluidized bread fermenter packed bread fermenter and the photo fermenter so there are five types of fermenter then what are the uses of a fermenter so the most basic pre request right of any industrial microbiology process is going to be the fermenter so if we want to find out any uh, metabolic process then we have to take the fermenter because this fermenter is going to provide the suitable environment for the growth of the microorganisms and to uh, for the process of fermentation too and this fermenter is going to be of very much used in industries like pharmaceutical food industry breweries distilleries etc so this is all about a design of a fermenter uh, and we will learn about another question from industrial microbiology in the consecutive exam revision videos thank you